everyone, welcome to this webinar with about high availability with uh, Bill Manning. All right, so I'm going to be your host today, uh, Sarver Gawal. I've brought in Bill. He's a member of my team. Um, he's going to talk to you about uh, high availability and uh, how it can relate to uh, your um, JFrog deployments. Um, Bill, do you want to uh, give a quick introduction? Yeah. How you doing? I'm. Uh... Um, uh, so sorry, I lost my audio. I couldn't hear what you actually said. So uh, I'm just going to kind of go with it. But uh, yeah, how you doing? <laughs> I'm Bill Manning. I'm one of the solution architects over here at JFrog. Uh, Mr. Rob and I work on the same team. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been working with a lot of our customers for over four years now at JFrog and seeing uh, everything grow, come and go, and all the things in between. So I'm here to back Sarab up on this. Excellent. Thank you. All right, guys, so let's let's get uh, started talking about high availability here. Now, as we're going through this presentation, there's one central theme that I want everyone to keep in mind. And that, that theme here is how can admin teams achieve excellence and provide more of a past experience to their internal users, right? And, and when we're talking about a past experience, there's a couple of key tenants that we want to discuss. And one of those key tenants is high availability. Right, you can't provide yes. a past platform without having a highly available system. So let's talk about how we can achieve high availability, how we can maintain uh, this kind of a system, and, and achieve excellence with a past platform. So I've thrown this number up there, uh, five nines, right? And and this is this is something that uh, everyone should be pretty well familiar with. Uh, it's gotten a lot of uh, industry attention once we've gone to cloud, right? Um, what is this? What does this mean? What is this all about? Right, five nines. Uh, this is referencing uptime. Right, uh, for any given system, we need to be able to maintain SLAs. Right, software level agreements, which between us and our end users, which let them know that they can plan their systems, their processes, their applications based on this SLA. Right, they can work and uh, provide their business continu continuity according to uh, this kind of an SLA, right? Uh, and in order to achieve this, in order to be able to provide something like this, we need to be able to build highly available systems, and a, a big part of that is redundancy. So there's two and, types of redundancy. Go oh, ahead, I was just going to chime in just really fast. I mean, remember, everybody, that when you are are talking about these five nines, right? Those number of nines also dictate the way the solution is being hosted and handled, right? So if you're in your own infrastructure versus a cloud infrastructure, if you're using a cloud infrastructure, you can remove a nine, right? Because unfortunately what happens is, is that, that you're relying on another five nines. Um, so in other words, your dependencies affect the number of nines you have behind that. Uh, and that's in terms of SLA, you know? So if you are using like a hosted solution, um, you have to adjust those accordingly. So I'm just saying. Perfect. Yeah, go perfect. ahead. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, perfect. Thank you. Thank you for uh, for including that. So so definitely we want to be uh, very mindful of that. And and actually, so we're going to discuss, uh, you know, each of these, uh, both of those points as we're going through these different architectures, right? So let, let's start by, uh, first of all, uh, clarifying uh, a, a very big confusion that uh, we see often, right? Uh, Bill, Bill and I have run into this uh, a number of different times. Um, Bill, do you, do you want to share the the story from uh, from, from you know one of, one of your many stories along the the confusion that we've had around this? Yeah, absolutely. There's a couple of different confusions actually, and when it comes to terminology, right? Um, so so there's a couple of things like HA versus DR, but also the uses of the term itself, high availability. Um, there's different aspects behind it because in some respects, if you go by say, using like AWS terminology, uh, you would say high availability means that you have say multi-region support, right? You're installing it in one location, you have it in another, it means that you have some sort of geographic redundancy or, or cross-region redundancy. There's also other terms for high availability, right? And what we're gonna talk about today is this is as a service, right, which is slightly different. And then if you correlate this to something like disaster recovery, so, you know, disaster recovery is meant in, in the slide that's shown right here is the idea of having a, you know, basically a mirror of what you're currently utilizing as an, as basically a standby failover, right? There's a mixture of things here. So like I said, if you talk about AWS high availability, that's more of an active active scenario between multiple regions offering it as a service. You can also talk about disaster recovery. Where you might have, say, two, one is a mirror of the primary instance and if something happens, you fail over. And then we're going to talk about what high availability means to us today as part of the product line. 
Sorry, is that what you mean, Ms. Sorrell? Because like I said, I just had a phone right. call with a customer that kept referring to high availability, and it was really confusing our salesperson in a way because they kept using it in different terminology. I had to go in and clarify the fact that they were using the, the uh, AWS example of high availability versus the actual high availability that we talk about today as part of our product, which is actually having a central entry point, multiple artifactory instances to help with things like redundancy and load. Exactly, exactly. And I, and I think a lot of the confusion that happens here is the fact that it's such an overloaded term that can be applied at so many different levels, right? Because you could apply it at, uh, again, we're, we're talking about redundancy here, which can be applied at the hardware level, at the application level, at the data level, right? So there's different levels at which we can apply the same term of high availability. And when we talk about it at the, uh, at the sort of the hardware level, we can talk about, you know, how do we design highly available systems? And that's different than having a high availability in your application layer, right? So when talking about designing a system that's highly available, we're talking about what is the end user experience, right? The end user experience, and, and this is where I'm going to go back to that 99, the, the five nines, right? That end user experience, if you want to get five nines, that means you need to have a, a, a failover strategy. It means you need to have a DR strategy that will uh, make sure you're able to achieve uptime. But that's talking about uh, creating a highly available system, not a highly available application, right? Uh, and so we can apply it at that level. And at that level, we're talking about DR, right? Uh, where we have a complete hardware redundancy. We're, we're making sure that if this entire system goes down or if this entire region goes down, if we're talking about cloud, then we're able to fail over to a completely different data center or a completely different region, right? Uh, and then when we're talking about high availability at the application layer. And just, uh, and just, well, for, and just really quick, by the way, uh, Saurabh, and actually if we want to talk about that, we talk about it, consider that more, if, you know, for terminology's sake, once again, active passive, mm -hmm. right? So in other words, the passive active. system is waiting for something bad to happen to go over to it, where you could have the same sort of level of effect though, if you had two instances of, say, of Artifactory doing cross replication, and then using a load balancer to determine based on either load or health, um, being able to have more of an active active. System. So you have both available uh, in terms of that too. Exactly, and thank you, Bill. That because that is a very, very important distinction. The fact that this this D, the the DR scenario has a passive uh, passive node there, right? So so the the active active means that you have uh, you can achieve a higher throughput, right? Because in in this DR scenario, you're not going to route your normal production traffic to that to that instance until something goes wrong, right? Um, so very very good point. Uh, and then now when we talk about at the application level, right, um, at, at this layer, how do we achieve high availability? Um, and, and then that's that's going back into um, during production time, we have this load balancer, we have, uh, you know, a, a number of different artifactory uh, instances that are all in a single region or a single data center, right? Uh, they're in one location and we're not talking about a uh, DR scenario here. We're talking about uh, a common uh, one cluster that can serve a high throughput. And, um, and we have customers that are running, you know, we show th three here as the minimum because just so you're aware, when we define a high availability system or an HA in this case, you would have a primary and then members, right? So you have a primary dictator and then the members that are actually associated to it. But we have customers that are running 10, 15, 20 node clusters at a time to handle much more, you know, load, uh, you know, over time and providing a much more robust service. Sorry, Sarah, I'll let you keep going. <laughs> Exactly, and 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 uh, that that's that's an important point here is that the the number of nodes that you have in this cluster is going to be critical, right? If you're trying to achieve something like five nines of availability, think about think about if you have the minimum requirement of two nodes in an HA cluster. If I only had two nodes, right? During maintenance periods, uh, I'm bringing down a, a single node, right? Uh, at that point, I'm not highly available. You you can't really achieve that kind of an uptime. You can't achieve five nines availability if I'm hosting this myself. Uh, it's not possible to achieve that kind of uptime unless I'm able to do things like rolling upgrades, right? Uh, just because I'm doing maintenance, maintenance, if, if I'm having to bring down the business because of maintenance, I'm not going to be able to achieve the uptime that I'm trying to achieve, right? So it's very important uh, that based on the, the uh, expectations that we have for the traffic and, and based on what we're trying to achieve with this uptime, 
uh, we are scaling the, the number of nodes here accordingly. And remember when you are also too, just so you're aware, when you are setting up these kind of high availability systems, you have a multitude of different ways in which you can do this. You can do it like uh, in your own data center using your own equipment with your own load balancer, you know, you know, iron servers doing what they do, your external database, your external file store to handle it. You can deploy this in say, uh, you know, Kubernetes, right? So you can have this running in a Kubernetes instance where this is all defined as part of the charts and the pods. You can even do this in things like OpenShift, uh, where you can go ahead and deploy this. You know, but the, the concepts are the same, and it's the implementation that differs between them are the same. Excellent. Um, now, you know, there's a couple of questions that, that I get all the time with regards to uh, high availability. When, when, we, when we talk about this highly available structure, right, um, it, it's it's hard not to talk about things like data redundancy, right? Uh, so, so Bill, when when it comes to things like data redundancy, how can I be secure? How can I how can I uh, be resilient um, in, in both the application layer with with the artifactory application, but also making sure I don't lose my artifacts, my database, all all that. Absolutely. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can either use a standard like backup methodology and restore, but that's really, you know, the thing is, is that when I say that, one of the things you have to mentally keep in check is, is the fact that you are going to have downtime. Right. I mean, when you're actually using like a backup and restore method, that's downtime. You can go with the DR method where you have an active passive sort of scenario that allows you to have that more, you know, basically more resilient data robustness uh, between them. And that's more of a of a, oh, crap, what happened? We need to go over because something went down. You know, that's that's an emergency process. And once again, unless you have a very good active sort of load balancer to the text this that's in front of this, you know, that could also have potentially downtime. One of the best ways to actually do this is actually to have geo redundant systems uh, where, you know, what part of this is you might have two HA clusters that are in full mesh synchronization and then have an active load balancer that can do two full things. One is actually kill, you know, switch over in case one fails or one is over. And then the other way is if one is overloaded and you need to defer or even using geo location as a way to also redirect traffic, but also having more than one location as your backup or, you know, either active active or active passive is always your best bet and the central hub behind this though to ensure that you don't have to do those oh crap moments or to make sure you're handling the load is also anticipating the load and making sure you have highly available clusters to handle that excellent awesome so so we, we've covered at this point now uh, high, high availability and what that means at many different levels right so we talked about uptime how to achieve Five nines of availability. We talked about business continuity with uh, high availability and how to uh, make sure that we're able to do things like rolling upgrades. Uh, we, we discussed uh, the difference between DR and uh, HA. Um, and we talked about not only hardware redundancy, uh, application redundancy, and uh, but also uh, data redundancy as well. Um, That's correct. Are there, are there any uh, questions from anyone? We have uh, maybe a couple, a couple minutes for a Q&A uh, possible. So it looks like there are a couple of questions here in the chat. Um, what happens if in the high availability architecture, the load balancer fails? I'm sorry, where was that again? Oh, there we go. Oh, what happens in high availability if the load balancer fails? Well, that's actually where you're going to definitely want to have a, uh, you know, the load balancer that would be in front of the HA, that actually would take the service down, right? That's still your ingress point and your egress point uh, into the cluster itself. So if the load balancer did go down, you would actually want to put, you, this is where you want to have geo redundancy, right? Or actually have disaster recovery. Because that means that the actual, three, you know, you know the, the cluster behind the load balancer is unavailable, right? There's, you know, it, it's supposed to proxy the requests for all the transactions that are happening in the cluster. So if that goes down, those transactions stop. That's where you might want to have some other way to flop over to, say, your DR or to push your traffic over to your geo redundant site, uh, because then that would be able to handle the load. Makes sense. Yeah, definitely. So in, in, that, in that sort of a situation, because at that point, uh, we're looking at uh, loss of application access. 
uh, there, there's certain things that we would define as critical uh, versus non-critical uh, issues, and, mm -hmm. and definitely loss of access for you know across the board for your entire company would be a critical issue. <laughs> That's like so, that, that, that's like that's like staring at the door and having the door locked without a key. <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> there's not much going on there. You can knock all day long, but unless you can get, you know, nobody's going to answer. So you know, you got to exactly. get in somehow. But if it's not there, yeah, yeah, that's when. Like I said, in, in most cases like that, I would say that you know, my number one option whenever I talk to customers is that DR is a strategy, but I think I think redundancy is better. Definitely, definitely. Excellent. Are there are there any other questions in the chat? Going once, going twice. All right. Thank you, everyone, for uh, for attending this. Uh, you know, very brief. Uh, that was fast. Uh, with us. <laughs> <laughs> High availability. <laughs> Excellent. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Sarav and Bill, for this short but useful uh, presentation. Uh, and thank everyone for joining us today. Don't forget to join us tomorrow as well, where we'll be covering a, another uh, artifactory feature. We will be talking about checks and base storage. Uh, so we hope you will be able to join us tomorrow at 1130 as well. And we wish you a great day. We hope to see you tomorrow. Goodbye, everyone. Be safe, everybody.